Hi, it's Dr. Alex Popovich, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be talking about developing habits, or some people call them streaks, and what applications I would recommend uh, and which one I use. So let's dive in. Some people don't believe that routines help your productivity, uh, but I'm a huge believer in uh, routines and streaks. Um, I believe they improve your productivity because you do not have to think what you're going to do next. It's almost automatic. Uh, and I believe that pretty much most people uh, and quite a lot of mammals actually love routines. The biggest example is you go to work. You were used to going maybe to catching a bus or a train to work um, and then um, working for how many hours, uh, eight or nine, and then doing the same trip coming back. And um, uh, that's basically a routine. Um, and the biggest problem what a lot of people found with the COVID-19 pandemic was that um, their routines got changed. So they found it difficult and they had to develop a new routine to become productive. The habits and the streaks are not the same as tasks. Um, tasks are in some ways easier. You go and just put it into your task manager and then you tick it when it's ready. The habits, it actually takes a while to develop. Some people, like James Clear, say you need to do it around 60 times to develop a habit. And that's a long time. That's pretty much two months. Um, and the habits are easy to break. If you skip it for more than two or two, two to three days, it's very hard to go back into it. That's why changing the routine or if something happens, all of a sudden um, your routine changes and your productivity drops. Um, so we'll go through this um, uh, flow chart that I've developed. And this is just one of the example of uh, uh, routines and how I process my routines, how I keep an eye on the routines and what I want to necessarily develop. So you have a goal in your life or your vision. And my vision is to be healthy. And then you have to figure out what that actually means to you. Uh, so to me, it means that I don't want to run a marathon, but I want to do some exercises that are one, going to keep me fit, um, and two, uh, prevent injuries. So to me, um, that means a daily cardio, and my daily task is anything with like five minutes and onwards of cardio. Um, daily weights, same time, or just one set of exercises. And daily yoga, very similar tasks. I don't have to do it a long time. I want, these are my, what I need to do to make me feel better. And I do daily yoga because probably from playing tennis and basketball before I have a lot of low back pain. And if I don't do it, I'm really struggling with my back pain. I get up and oh, I don't know. I feel like an old woman. The other part of being healthy for me means having a good and healthy food intake. And that's because it's going to minimize me preventing a chronic illness like a diabetes or heart problem. I need to increase the vegetable intake, so minimize the red meat or a processed meat and decrease intake of processed food. And processed food quite be, can be quite a lot. It could be just the pasta, uh, which is not too bad, to chippies, to anything. And how do I actually do that? By doing the home cooking and planning a week uh, food for a week. And for me, the last part of being healthy is actually having enough rest. Part of it is developing a sleep habit. And for me, I know I like to be around seven hours a day of sleep. Sometimes it could be less, sometimes it could be more. But on average, this is what my body likes, seven to eight hours of sleep. So one of my habits is to get seven hours of sleep every day. And the other one is to get four weeks of holiday. Um, and it doesn't have to be traveling, um, but it could be uh, just staying at home. And uh, this is not necessarily a habit. It's more of a kind of a, a task or a plan or a project of planning a holiday. So when we talk about my habits when it comes to being healthy, 
It's getting seven hours of sleep, daily cardio, daily weights, daily yoga, and then planning my vegetable intake and my meal plans basically every week for every day of that week. Now, some people say, oh, well, this is really easy if you work from home nine to five or eight to four. Um, but I am a surgeon and I used to be on call a lot, not so much these days. So it's not necessarily about having exact time to do this and blocking your calendar at exact time to do this. It's more doing this whenever you can fit it in. So, for example, I used to do daily yoga five days a week, Monday to Friday, 25 minutes in the morning. Now I decided to, or I bought an electric bike and I'm biking to work and some of my work is pretty far away, it's 25 k's one way. So it takes me around 50, 55 minutes uh, one way to get there. So now, and I have to be there let's say at 8 o'clock uh, or 8.30. So sometimes that daily yoga got pushed uh, a little bit and I can't achieve it anymore. So I've changed it to three days a week, but I realized that didn't actually work for me. Five wasn't too bad, but three all of a sudden was just not part of the habit. So I had to change it and I made it, I'm going to do it daily, even if that's after work and even if that's just for two or three minutes stretching my lower back when I get back from work. So now it'll become easier. I don't have to do 25 minutes. I can just do it whenever I can squeeze it in. Same with the cardio. I have a bike at home stationary bike or a bike to work. So that's part of my cardio and same with the weights. So it doesn't have to be a long time. What you need to do with developing habits and streaks is making it very easy for that minimum. And that minimum is very short or um, you just do several poses in yoga or you do cardio where you just, um, let's say, run for 500 meters or something like that, which is not that far. Because that way, you know you're going to achieve it every day or you have a high likelihood to achieve it every day. And that way, um, you don't break your streak or you don't break your habit. And that's the most important bit is not breaking your habit. But also having to do these streaks when you plan your day and your week, you actually plan your calendar to achieve these things. So you know, if you look the night before, what it might happen with your calendar, where you can squeeze it in. For example, if I'm on call um, I, or start early at work, I might just squeeze five minutes because I know that if anything becomes really busy later on at work, I might not get to do it. So five minutes in the morning is way better than none. Or even one minute in the morning is better than one. When it comes to my daily reading, my goal is to read a paragraph. That's not very far. Sometimes and often I read a chapter, uh, but sometimes it's just a paragraph. And that's good because I read. It's better than nothing. It keeps my streak alive. So the three most common, uh, probably the best apps to use, are number one, Habitify. I really enjoy this app. It's very simple to use uh, and uh, it does what it needs to do for me. It's not making it complicated that I spend too much time thinking how I'm going to organize it. I put the basically habit in and I finish it. The other one is what some people uh, like, um, like Thomas Frank. He loves Habitica. Um, for me, this doesn't work. It's very gamified. You get certain things and I'm I'm not a gamer I don't kind of do these things and they distract me from what I want to do so um, I prefer Habitify the third one which is to me very similar to Hab to Habitify is Streaks and it's again very clean uh, very to doist type episode um, app and that's very easy to use both of your phone or um, watch. So we'll go to my iPad because I'll show you how I use Habitify. So I quite like using iPad with the mouse because you can see it more. So there's a Habitify app. So we'll open it. And uh, as you open it, you have all habits or morning habits. And for me, the morning habits 
It's automatic. If you put a habit that happens at the morning or any time of the day, it's going to ha- come in the morning. You don't see the afternoon or evening because it's here today or right now when I'm filming, it's actually not the afternoon or evening. So it just comes with the morning. But you can add other different areas, but I don't actually need to. So I have a lot of habits and I've done few. Let's say I've done these three habits this morning and uh, I have the other habits to do. And some of these are work related uh, and for all different domains of my work, like a medical and YouTube channel, um, health or personal or friends and family, I have a daily, basically a highlight that I want to achieve. And that changes every day. So for today it's developing a video, uh, but uh, yesterday might have been planning a video. Uh, tomorrow it might be um, just uh, doing a few uh, uh, Instagram posts or a social media posts for it or anything like that. Uh, my medical would um, highlight and stuff like that. So if you want to add a habit, at the top here, sorry, at the top here you have a date. I tend to do this. I tend to hide the complete. And uh, you add the habit. And you can just put something like this. Uh, which are the habits that I've put in. Or the templates. Or you can create your own. And so you write what it is. You can put a little emoji in front of it. What? How often does it do it? And you just tick the... Um, what you want. Is it one time per day or several times per day? So for example, if you want to uh, meditate, you might want three times a day. Uh, what time of the day? This is where you tick which part of it. And if you have a specific time to send you a reminder, it will, um, you just click on here. And this is why I like it. It's very easy to use. And then you can look at the progress. Now, my progress is going to be a little bit funny. And I have to explain this because I have tried using Todoist, which is my task management, as part of the habit forming application. Um, Because I have quite a lot of apps, (laughs) since I like apps. Anyway, and so I used Habitify probably uh, last year a lot uh, and then changed to Todoist. And that's why quite a few streaks are kind of empty. But then I realized it's actually not very good for me to use to do this because you can't see that easily progress. You can't see how many times have you done it this week or not this habit. Um, if you don't do the habit, it goes to the next day. Um, so it's, 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 it's just messy. While I can here see how many habits I've done or I can go, if I look at it for the last uh, month, you can see that I've done it every day. You can go to every different year. If we go to 2019, you can see when I since I started how often I've done this um, habit. If I go to 2020, you can see a really well progress. And then here you can see that I've just decided not to use it. But as I said, I found to do it and I found that it's a bit harder to develop my streaks and my habits. So I've come back to Habitify because I like it because it's so simple. If you want some complex analysis, you are better off with uh, streaks. You can do much more complicated analysis. Anyway, that is my video for today about developing your habits and hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much for watching this video and bye for now.